New measures introduced recently aim to ensure a fairer playing field for Singaporean job seekers have been announced in recent weeks. Among these are the requirement for employers to place advertisements on a new national jobs bank and to satisfy approving authorities that they have been unable to recruit a Singaporean before their applications for employment passes for foreign staff will even be considered. Now, while these efforts are likely to be a boost for locals, international businesses have also applauded some of the measures. Channel News Asia's S. Ramesh examines the new fair consideration framework and the reactions of international businesses to the ruling in this week's Spotlight segment. Remaining open to foreign manpower to complement the local workforce, while at the same time ensuring that all firms consider Singaporeans fairly for job openings. That's the crux of the new fair consideration framework. It aims to weed out discriminatory practices by firms like hiring their own kind, which excludes Singaporeans. The first step is to tighten the application process for employment pass holders who make up nearly 13% of the total foreign workforce of 1.3 million people in Singapore. Figures for the last five years on the Manpower Ministry's website show an upward trend in the number of EP approvals between 2009 and 2011. But with tighter controls setting in, the numbers have been dropping since 2012. Singapore's International Business Chamber body says the framework is a good idea. A lot of people initially were saying, eh, is this really going to work? Where we seem to be with this is to be able to say there are some rules and we hope you'll follow those rules. And then in addition to that, what the government has done is created an operation where the companies and the people actually get together looking at the same issue. Um, you don't have to go anywhere, you just open up a book and there are the people that are wanting to be in the job with their skills and their capabilities. Most of our companies are looking in the mass to hire Singaporeans. After all, why would you come here if it wasn't to hire Singaporeans? One example of this is Standard Chartered Bank, which has a workforce of some 7,600 employees. Of this total, 75% of them are Singaporeans and permanent residents. And in its branches, 90% of employees are Singaporeans and PRs. And Stanchart says it's currently reviewing its human resource policies and processes to support the new measures under the Fair Consideration Framework. It believes it is critical for a global institution to find the right balance in growing the Singaporean core while attracting and retaining a pipeline of specialist foreign talent. And it has always been proactive in taking actions to adjust hiring practices when necessary. When specialist talents are required, it will look for them from its pipeline of local candidates before looking elsewhere. The Manpower Ministry is giving employers enough time for themselves to be familiar with the new requirements under the Fair Consideration Framework. Now it is currently conducting information sessions about the new requirements for employers. In the first half of next year, the Manpower Ministry will identify companies which it feels needs greater scrutiny and these companies will be notified. Now, greater scrutiny means companies which have got room for improvement in their hiring and career development practices. And by the middle of next year, the new Jobs Bank will be launched. The labour movement in Singapore believes the framework specifically addresses concerns of professionals, managers and executives who make up middle management in many companies. This fair consideration uh, framework helps to further address uh, this middle group and to say that uh, how can Singaporean uh, job seekers, whether they are school leavers or they are changing jobs at mid-level, um, get a fair go uh, at those opportunities. We are certainly not anti-foreigners. I mean, uh, Singapore uh, would require uh, both the uh, local as well as the foreign workforce to do all the jobs that we need done within this economy. What we are for is that every worker should be valued and every worker should count. So in other words, Singaporeans should be given consideration uh, so that he, he um, can make full use uh, of his potential. But experts caution against micromanagement when implementing the framework, especially when it extends to other issues like promoting or retaining staff. When it comes to promotion, 
retention, I think this is a little bit more difficult. Uh, I tend to, don't want to see micromanagement by the government. I would like to, to see employer being rational, that they will promote when the promotion is due, uh, they will recognise, they will retain when it makes business sense for them. If you have somebody who is so good a Singaporean and you choose not to retain, it's a loss for yourself. So I think the market adjustment mechanism itself should take care of that. And for those who still remain sceptical about the new ruling and the job bank? They should give it a try. Right now, if you are a person who is thinking about moving to another location, you have to, to get someone to pay attention to you, you have to go get someone to pay for your, um, you know, pay for the work that you need to do. You need to go out and get people who will support you and all of that sort of stuff. And you need to put down documentation about who you are and what you are and where you want to go. Now what the government is saying is, you do that for us, there's no charge. Uh, you can say a lot about yourself, you can say a little bit about yourself, uh, you can say whatever you want about yourself, and you are by and large guaranteed those companies are required to talk to you, look to you, see what you have, which I think is really a very, very good situation. The Manpower Ministry says when the Fair Consideration Framework kicks in on the 1st of August next year, the advertisement requirement will only be for applications under the Employment Pass category. Now for those in the Work Permit and S Pass categories, the Ministry says there are other tools like the levies and the dependency ceiling ratios to spur firms to consider employing suitable Singaporeans for these jobs. But the Ministry says it will be monitoring the situation closely and will in future consider extending the advertisement requirement to jobs in the S-Pass and work permit categories also if it is deemed necessary.